In this video, we're going to be looking at Vantic Accelerator Back to Work Edition. As you know, Vantic is a development platform for rapidly building real-time event-driven applications at unprecedented speed, and Vantic Accelerator makes that even faster by providing a framework to integrations for sensors and mapping out the spatial hierarchy of a smart building or a smart infrastructure. And so here you can see on my screen, I've got this hierarchy of buildings, floors, spaces, assets, and sensors, a couple issues here. And those issues are what we're going to focus on here today in this demonstration. So let me clear them out and take a look at what this provides. The first thing that you'll see is that there's a view and a way to add buildings. You can simply come to the add buildings dialog. And as you start to type in an address and give the building a name, it will automatically geo position that building. As you drill down onto a different building, you can associate floor plans with given floors. And once you jump into a floor, you'll see that those floors have assets on them. And with those assets, there are any number of sensors that might be attached to them. Also on a given floor, you have a space allocation that can be used with an RTLS system for the purpose of indoor positioning. And so as you can see on this particular floor, I've got some employees or at least tags that are on employee badges or using their mobile phone or any number of different technologies as well as some other assets for example in this case a thermostat in this particular area now because this is a real-time system anything that goes on in the system is reflected in real time whether it's in the back end or in the visualization up the front end so for example as these individuals are moving throughout the building as the RTLS system that feeds us information we'll see that information in real time reflected and so what you're seeing here in this particular case of course is that We've got a number of individuals who just sort of congregated in an area and then went on their way. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. But now that I've kind of given you a sense of what the accelerator uh, provides out of the box, let's take a look at some of the plugins that allow you to quickly adopt these back to work strategies. So I'm going to come back to the home screen here and we're looking at the issue list. The first thing that we're going to take a look at is using a thermal camera in conjunction with the platform, with the accelerator, in order to identify an employee who's come back to work with an elevated body temperature. I'm going to simulate the camera here. And so as I come into our little camera simulator, I'm going to engage the camera here. And the camera takes the thermal temperature reading, and in this case, the status is normal. And so any normal reading, of course, will pass through the system without error. So no issue on the screen at this time. Next, we're gonna take a look at what happens when an employee comes back to work and they have an elevated body temperature. You can see it says status high temperature and on the mobile phone as well, I've got this alert, this personnel with high body temperature. If I go into the Vantic mobile application, you can see that I have a similar view of what's on screen. So a mobile operator, somebody who needs to know exactly where this happened and who the individual is so that they know who they're looking for to make sure that that person isn't going to come into the building at this time. If I click on the acknowledge button, you'll see that this moves from the warning state to the acknowledge state, but it doesn't leave our dashboard. And the reason is, is because the employee cannot return to work until May 29th. It's calculated in this particular setup a 14-day return plan. You'll also notice that the AI engine is determined for this particular camera that a mask is not present. And this particular camera that we're using, although we integrate with a number of them, can actually do facial recognition with the mask. And if that's not possible, we can use other ways of correlating information, for example, using the badge reader in combination with the uh, with the camera reading and correlating those two pieces of data at the same time, whatever's necessary or appropriate for your organization. So now that we've seen a person uh, with a high temp, the next thing is what happens when that person comes back to work three days later and they don't have a high temperature anymore? So let's get back in front of our thermal camera. And what's interesting is they could come back in a in a completely different building. And because we're tying all the information together, different systems, different streams of data, we can correlate them. And so when I get back in front of the camera, you see the reading is normal here, but 
I've gotten a new notification on the mobile, and that is to show that there's another high body temperature alert, which I can drill down onto, and again, see where that employee has come back. So notice here in the state, what we have is an early return. Somebody's come back to work before that 14 days, even though they were asymptomatic, the system's still able to correlate that information. So one of the things about temperature, of course, is that oftentimes people are asymptomatic prior to that. And so one of the things that we want to be able to do is integrate with that RTLS system that we talked about earlier to look at potential contact points with this individual. So if I click on the view button here, I get sort of a similar view that you saw on the uh, on the mobile screen, you know, where exactly this person was found, but I also have this contact trace button. And this uses the information from the RTLS system to take this information and display it in this case, I'm showing employee IDs. This could, of course, show a name. This could send text messages to all of the individuals suggesting that they potentially came in contact with. And, of course, you can set rules for that. For example, the number of times those contacts uh, were created. We could even add to this the duration uh, that those contacts existed. You know, do they simply walk by each other in the hall or was it for a greater period of time. And in this case, we're seeing the number of contacts and the places that those things actually occurred. So we've looked at a couple of uh, a couple of use cases already, integration of thermal camera, integration of RTLS systems, using elevated body temperature as a means of identifying potential or people with, with, with some kind of symptom that might be significant. Additionally, we're also looking at the contact trace for that. So now let's move into our next use case, which is physical distancing or social distancing and crowd detection. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I just want to show you if we're looking at a live view of the stream of data coming in from one of our cameras, and this can be attached to any camera. This could be the thermal camera readings. This could be a standard camera with an RTSP stream. But if we look at the, uh, the individual sensors and we view the lobby cam here, uh, what you'll see is as individuals are walking through, an object detection algorithm is determining whether or not it's finding people in the scene. And then additionally, is it's coloring those boxes with an indication of whether or not social distancing or physical distancing is being violated. Red boxes in this particular case mean that at least two or more boxes are within six feet of each other. The yellow boxes indicate that they're right sort of on that cusp or on that edge, and the green boxes mean that those people are okay. And so what the system is doing is looking for some threshold, some number of people in a particular area that's crossed, or the amount of time that someone is spending it in an area too close within that six foot radius. And you'll notice I haven't gotten any, any alerts. If I go back to my mobile phone here for a minute, uh, you'll see that there's there's no alert on the screen, and that's because we haven't crossed the threshold. But when it dwells for too long, when we when we've reached a point where we've determined that someone should take action on what's going on in the scene, that it's happened for too long a period of time, this is when we'll automatically trigger that notification. And we're about to come up on it. This group of people here is uh, is about to get larger and they're going to stay there for some period of time. And so as we go over that, there you just see in the background, it says physical distance, physical distancing issue in building one first floor in the outpatient hall. Uh, you see the notification on the mobile screen. And if I open that up, you'll see the new alert will come in and I can open that up. I'm going to also open up the um, the view here on the dashboard so we can see them both at the same time. And of course, now we've got the indication that this issue has gone on for too long and the number of people has gone on for too long. And when they click on the close button, it'll close out the issue or they can watch it for a few moments and then go ahead and take action without having to somebody physically monitor those lines all the time. So here we've taken a look at two more use cases using object detection and proximity sensing to identify both when the crowd levels get too high or when physical distancing limitations, in this case approximately six feet, has been exceeded for some period of time. The last use case that we're going to take a look at in this demonstration is a simple use case, but a very important one. This has to do with hand sanitization and hygiene compliance. The first is rather simple. It's sort of a field service application, if you will. 
and that is when a hand sanitizer drops below a certain level, it will automatically notify maintenance personnel. So if I look at the user table here and we look at my user record, one of the things that you'll notice is I have these two roles. I've got a security role, which is why I was getting all the notifications for the physical distancing, and I've got the maintenance role, which is why I'll also get a notification for hand sanitization issues. So let's take a look at our sensors screen, and we'll just take a look at one of those hand sanitizers. And here we can see we have a hand sanitizer that's about to drop below its threshold for needing that maintenance. Of course, we've all gone into a building, put our hand underneath the hand sanitizer, and no uh, liquid has come out of it. And this is a very common problem, especially in hospitals or areas where you have high traffic, these things empty out, and then there's no fluid in them. So what this will do is automatically identify that, then find the right person in the right building who can actually triage that issue and send them a notification. So let's see how that works. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop the level in the, in the hand sanitizer below that 35%. Let's go back to our, our home screen. As we go below the level, we'll get that notification. So a couple of things that you're going to see here. One is you just saw on the screen, hand sanitizer refill. A couple moments later, you'll also see that there's a notification on the mobile, hand sanitization station needs a refill. If I open that up, you'll see I get the notification. If I open up the hand sanitization station, I, you'll see that it'll tell me what building it's in, that it's on the first floor, that it's by the registration counter, it shows me the amount left. And in this particular implementation, I, as the maintenance individual, very Uber style, uh, have the ability to accept or reject it. Uh, I could just assign it to that individual and make sure that they do it. In this case, I'm just going to click on accept here. And of course, what you see is that it's now in progress. And if I view the hand sanitization, you can see that that level's dropped below 27%. So what I'm going to do now is as the maintenance individual, I'll refill the station and it will automatically triage the issue to its, to its, uh, its logical uh, outcome, its business outcome, which is the hand station is refilled. And so simply by going ahead and putting liquid back into the machine, uh, once the machine crosses a certain level, it will automatically triage that issue by closing the issue. You see it's disappeared off the screen and you can see because I was watching it live, it's gone back up to about 97% and the issue has closed. The last one we'll take a look at is a simple hygiene compliance use case for those hand stations. When you've got this tied into certain kinds of systems, for example, like a Centrac system, then what you can do is monitor how your staff is using it. Now, those systems are already providing some level of hygiene compliance, and they'll give you uh, a list of who are all the people who used it and the number of times that they used it and which hand stations they used it uh, when tied into their uh, our TLS system. But what we can do is take real-time action. If you haven't used it in 30 minutes, then it will automatically send you a notification. And in fact, in this particular case, I've got it lowered down, which each time I don't use the hand sanitization in 10 seconds for the purpose of demo, I'll get that notification. So here, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the hand sanitizer, the station. And if I bring back up the mobile phone in what would be 30 minutes, but in this case, 10 seconds, I'll receive a quick notification on the mobile phone letting me know. And so that should happen any second now. And there it is, hand sanitization use request. It's been 30 minutes since your last sanitization. Anyway, that's a quick look at Vantic Accelerator for Back to Work. I hope you enjoy this video.